Hello everybody, nice to see you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, once again, first time on this side of the ocean. I, I attended the uh, last two conferences. Uh, I represent the Krakow University of Economics in Poland. Uh, and together with my colleagues, Marcin Czuprina and Michał Jakubczyk, I prepared some research and I would like to present some results, preliminary results of our research on behavioral perspective on fine wine pricing. As you all know, fine wines are broadly considered to be emotional assets, emotionally driven market participants like collectors, pe non-pecuniary benefits to owners, inconceivable price levels amounting to quarters of millions of dollars, sometimes for one bottle, bottle-like behavior, and many, many others are just few examples or, and confirmations of, of this fact. Those the prices are strongly influenced by behavioral factors of social nature, personal nature, and psychological nature. Our second motivation is our changes, current changes in trading technology, development of uh, of information and communication technology, changes in market organization and mar market microstructure, which facilitate trade, uh, and old-fashioned ways of wine trading, like private sales and auctions, face greater and increasing competition from, uh, from new trading platforms like LiveX Exchange, for example. And the third uh, problem we address in this study and we want to tackle with is the problem of sparse data and non-synchronous data, repeat sales, hedonic regressions, or simply indices disseminated via market uh, companies, by market, market companies play dominant role in examining wine price behavior over time. And we try to check something different and use and employ Bayesian approach uh, to check the price uh, behavior in the fine wine market. Uh, our main research question, because we analyze some behavioral issues, our research question is uh, how atypical features of fine wines and selected trade characteristics uh, which we suspect may convey some behavioral information, impact the fine wine prices. And as a typical features of wine, we consider some physical defects and in, or imperfections because each quality product is expected to be sound and uh, without any shortcomings and defects. And otherwise is identified as incomplete or damaged and is suspect to evoke the interest of customers after appropriate price adjustment. So we defined this, this influence, this impact as a flow effect. We also try to check the impact of different uh, bottle sizes, uh, and we analyze bottle size effect. The influence of different or of uh, differences in packaging, uh, we analyze the traditional cases and bottles uh, and single bottles. And we also analyze other, uh, other factors like transaction volume, for example, which can also provide some information about, about uh, behavior. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in financial markets, the trading volume, volume informs sometimes about the herding behavior, for example, of, and some irrational behavior of, of market participants. Our data set, uh, we analyzed the prices of Grand Pru wine, uh, uh, the first growth wines from Bordeaux, uh, vintages from 1900 to uh, 2014. Uh, we have, first we had data for uh, for vintages uh, 1992 up to 2008, uh, and then we add some data covering the older vintages, so the time span for older vintages is, is uh, shorter. Uh, in general, our sample size is more than 114,000 uh, transactions, and we 
take also the microstructural perspective and we consider three different trading platforms, trading systems, uh, auctions, electronic exchange and OTC market. I will show in a second what's, what's going on. And as, uh, pr uh, as previously mentioned, methodology is a Bayesian approach with non-informative priors. We, uh, uh, we are computing posterior distributions in JAX and use also construct a credible intervals, 95%. Uh, about trading venues, if you trade at LiveX, you can see such a screen on your uh, such a screen, and LiveX gathers not only uh, own transactions, but also provides transactions from auctions. You have these green dots, and OFEX. OFEX are transactions made by uh, LiveX members, but off exchange, not uh, online, not, not on in the electronic exchange. That's why OFEX uh, is uh, akin to uh, to the OTC market, auctions like auctions, and LiveX is an electronic exchange. Uh, when we look at the data structure, uh, we can see some regularities. Uh, LiveX, here are mean prices for one, uh, 750 milliliter bottles. Uh, LiveX prices are the lowest here. Uh, and uh, followed by auctions or OTC market with, uh, with highest prices. Uh, we provide some thorough analysis on it in different, in different study. Here just some information about the data structure, uh, also about mean bottle volume traded in LiveX are quite standard and uh, largest uh, vo volumes uh, are more fr uh, frequently traded on auctions. For example, we have also mean quantity transformed into 750 milliliters volume. You will see that the, on LiveX uh, uh, market participant trade more. The transactions are uh, larger, 20 bottles, for example. We have also, we could also, uh, having this data, get some information about damaged wines. Uh, LiveX classifies wines into specific contracts type and contract standard in bonds is without uh, any shortcomings and uh, damaged wines as are classified into uh, special contracts. Uh, there is not easy to, uh, to uh, check uh, the same in the auction market and auctions. Sotheby's or Christie provide catalogs and there are some short descriptions and based on analysis of some of catalogs, we just uh, estimated that the, the row uh, estimate may be like 5% of transactions are defined as, uh, or lots, exactly speaking, are defined as damaged. And also the percent of cases, cases we understand if, if wines are sold in 6 or 12 uh, bottles packages. So you can see it happens very often in auctions that there are single bottles traded and cases are more often in, in uh, LiveX or OTC market. And now our general <coughs> model, as already mentioned, in the model we focus on, on the behavioral, uh, how, beha uh, how different behavioral factors impact the final price. To simplify, uh, we assume the unobserved value of each producer and vintage, VT. Uh, 750 milliliter of wine, it changes proportionally with LiveX 50 index with the proportionality coefficient uh, beta. And the, this value is then adjusted in the single transaction depending on the predefined factors. And we further assume that the actually observed price is generated uh, from a symmetric distribution around the value. The variables are described here. Uh, we have all our uh, effects like flow effect, case effect. Those are b binary variables assuming the value, for example, one or zero for bottles in perfect conditions and one otherwise. We have also cases uh, as a binary variable. Uh, 
the bottle size we decompose into two factors, like binary variable assuming the value zero for 750 milliliter bottle and one otherwise, simply if there is any in, in influence of uh, when diff, diff, uh, when uh, two minutes left, okay, if there is any uh, difference uh, in trading different uh, wines as standard. And we also have uh, OTC and LiveX as binary variable to check what's, uh, to have a comparison to the auctions. Uh, our be beta estimates, beta parameters for each vinti vintage and producer, as you can, you can see, uh, the majority is less than double value of, of index. It, hap it happens that some are greater, like, for example, the most expensive wines are Mouton Rothschild 1945, 49, and 50, 53 with betas of uh, 27, but it is, uh, it is due, we had the very rare transaction for older wines, that's why such huge uh, deviations. Uh, and also here, the beta parameters are skewed heavily right. So the confirmation once again, where is the beta parameter located? And the results, first we uh, put all our transactions all together, all our trades, uh, so we could uh, assess that the prices on the OTC market are more than 6% uh, higher than on auctions. Here, LiveX pri live prices are almost the same like in auctions. We have the influence t -fall. it's a, a transaction volume effect that the higher, uh, it's like a price elasticity, the uh, greater volume decreases the price, 1% uh, and 30%. Here we have a case effect that the wines sold in cases, regular cases, are priced higher, like 2%, almost 3%. Non-standard bottles, there is an influence in comparison to the standard bottle. It, there is a price decrease of more than 4%, but it is also corrected. But this uh, second bo bottles, uh, bottles ratio, bottle size ratio, which is the relation of bottle size to, to the standard 750, okay? And the last one is a flow effect. So uh, when we have flows, the, 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 the price is, can be expected to be lower, uh, about 2%. And here, once again, the, 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 the results with different uh, trading systems, like from LiveX, auctions, and OTC market, uh, and that's, that's all. What we got, some discernible impact of predefined behavioral factors, like a flow effect, we can somehow measure it. And differences, there are also differences in wine pricing between trading system and the practical applicability of Bayesian modeling in examination of wine prices. And of course, our further research, uh, we, we would like to have uh, enhanced data set, particularly for older wines. And we will compare with <coughs> traditional estimation methods, the uh, validity of, of, of this Bayesian approach. And we will include other behavioral factors, like, for example, wine, wine age. And that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. One question.